Welcome to my overview of Cougar's wireless gaming chair. This is their Nexus Aero chair. Now, this video is sponsored by Cougar, which is why it's more of an overview than a review, but I will be giving my honest critiques about various aspects of this chair as we break it down. Now, what makes this chair so unique? Well, in a space where every chair is basically a copy and paste of each other, I really liked how Cougar was trying to bring something different to the table. Visually, what stands out here is that on the bottom here, you got this diamond cutout, which kind of massages your bottom. It's definitely a design forward chair. On the sides here, you got this carbon fire stitching that goes all along the sides. And then most obvious is that on the back, instead of more PVC leather that's found on the rest of this chair, you've got mesh here. And then behind the mesh, you've got this giant fan. It's a 200 millimeter RGB fan sticking back there. I'll talk about more of that in a minute. As always, we'll break the chair down starting from the bottom and working our way up. Starting with the casters and legs, the casters are huge on this chair and it allows the chair to roll really smoothly on any surface. Now, the legs are also nice and fat and wide and for people who like to prop their feet up on a chair leg like this, it would have been great except for the fact that the seat depth is really deep and then the legs don't come out as wide and so that makes it really difficult to actually prop your feet up onto the legs like this. In terms of features under the chair, on the right side, this lumbar pad, by the way, is redundant. I'm gonna take it off for now, I'll explain more in a minute. But on the right side, you're gonna have your height adjustment. So this tab here, you pull it up and it adjusts your height. And then on the right side here, like more in the hip area is a handlebar. And this is gonna adjust your seat, uh, your uh, back tilt. So your back tilt here, if you lift it up and you push back tension into it, it'll lock and it's an infinite lock. So basically it'll lock in any position that you want. And at full tilt, it goes back pretty far. You can go back further than this. I'll explain how in just a minute, but this is how far you can get back inside of your chair. Now what's unique about this mechanism is that if I were to lift it all the way up, you can see that it stops right there. This is different. This headrest keeps falling off as well. Um, this is unique because I, on all my other racing style gaming chairs, it can fold nearly like totally flat. And I don't know if this is intentional as a safety mechanism, but um, on the other chairs, like if you're a grown adult and you do this and it actually hits you in the back, you're like, ah, it kind of hurt a little bit and then you're able to bring it back up. But I've got young kids and they play in my chairs and I have a racing style gaming chair at home uh, as part of my collection there. And <laughs> they climbed in and this is not hard to pull. And so they pulled it and it basically flattened them. And while they didn't get hurt, they were stuck. They were screaming for me to get them out. So it can be a little bit scary. So I appreciate that it locks there, but there is a con with this, which is the fact that this lock doesn't allow you to come past 95 degrees. So if you look, this is more of my 90 degree. And then if you can see the tilt here is actually at 95 degrees. So if you're somebody who likes to sit completely straight up inside of your chair, this one may not be the one for you. Now, when it comes to the middle bottom, you've got this giant uh, knob there, and that knob is gonna control your seat tilt tension. So that's different than your back tilt tension. I'll explain the different in just, difference in just a minute, but if I go ahead and unlock the seat tilt, you can see that I'm tilting in this chair, and that knob, if I turn it to the right, it's gonna make it more difficult to tilt, and if I loosen it to the left, it's gonna make it easier for me to fly back in the chair. On the left side now is the seat tilt limiter. Again, seat tilt, Back tilt, you can use those together. I'll explain in just a minute, but this seat tilt, basically if you lock it, you can't tilt in your chair. And if you unlock it, then it, you're free to tilt back inside the chair. Now, this also functions as a seat, as a seat, tilt, uh, as a seat tilt lock as well, because you're able to kind of tilt in any position. And then if you push it down, it'll lock you in that position. So you can see that this is a knee tilt. So it's like tilting at the knee area. So if I tilt back like this, and then I go ahead and lock it, then you can see that it's tilted in that position. If you use these together, I'm able to tilt all the way back here and lock that. And then I can use this, and hopefully I don't hit that chair, but you can use this to essentially get to basically 180 degree rear tilt, or tilt inside your chair. And you may not, like if you're somebody who naps in your chair, great. But you know, uh, this position may not be super relevant to a lot of people, but for people who like to maybe kind of relax in their chair, maybe lift their legs up, having this kind of position does feel pretty nice. I always say this, like the high end chairs, the really high end chairs, none of them have the ability to lock your seat in a reclined position. And it's a real shame because one of the best ways to experience watching shows or reading documents, uh, long documents on your screen is in a tilted locked position. It's fantastic. Uh, I've always found it to be a huge pleasure. I was a big uh, critic of racing style gaming chairs until I realized like, oh wow, this is actually 
pretty fantastic. The seat cushion is one of the best I've experienced on any racing style gaming chair. I do wish it was a little bit wider for the ergonomic rebels out there, but in terms of like plushiness, it feels great. You get a good amount of give, it feels like pretty soft, but yet at the same time, you don't feel like you're sinking into it. You don't feel like you're not getting any support relative to a really, really popular, I'm not sure if I'm gonna say their name, that's right. Relative to a really, really popular racing style gaming chair, it is a lot softer than that. Uh, it's also got this diamond shape cutout, the Nexus Aero Black, the one I have here. It's got these diamond cutouts on the bottom and you can feel them on your butt. Um, some people might not like it. I find it's okay. Uh, it kind of adds a little bit of like a massage thing, a little texture to your booty. And then one of the best, uh, yeah, and it's also got these perforated holes. The perforated holes allow a little bit more breathability into that PVC leather, which isn't the most breathable fabric out there. And if you get the other color variant, you won't get the diamonds, but you will get the perforated holes. Now, one of the best parts about the seat are gonna be these bolsters. You can see that these bolsters are not hard whatsoever. As a matter of fact, there's no hard edge found anywhere in this seat. That means if you're somebody who likes to sit up like this, this thing flattens really easily. So that means you're able to sit like this in an ergonomic rebel mode. If you wanna sit both legs up, this is a little tricky because I busted my knee, I got ACL surgery here. So I think I can do it now. This is, this is pretty cool that I can do it now. Anyways, um, this is also allowable. Again, I wish the seat was a little bit wider so it would have a little bit more space in this chair, but you can definitely get away with this and it feels totally comfortable because again, no hard edges anywhere on the seat. The arms are surprising both in a good way and a bad way. So in terms of adjustments, it's able to go up and down. You can slide it forward and back and you can swivel it in, middle and out. But this is where it's a little bit weird because this chair's price point is I believe $400 and most racing style gaming chairs at this price point, you get the width adjustment. You can slide it in and out like this, but this one you cannot. So that is a little bit not great. Now, in terms of what is good though, is that the padding here actually feels really good. It's actually pretty supple. It's got a good amount of give and it feels supportive on your arms. The backrest of this chair doesn't have any hard edges here. And when I'm sitting inside of the chair, I'm able to fully open up my chest. So I don't feel like I'm ever being turtled by the chair, which is great. So I'm able to really open that chest up like this feels wide open here. And then my arms can fit and fall nicely onto these sides here. And again, this is not hard. These are soft edges and it fits really, really really nicely in this little nook. Now when it comes to the lumbar support, you can see that this thing actually has a built-in lumbar here because it's mesh, you can actually see that there's a pad right here. Fortunately, this adds a nice, really nice bump for when you're sitting up. Like when I'm sitting inside this chair, this bump feels really, really, really good. The downside though is that it's not adjustable, right? And the adjustability, ah, man, I, I really wish it was adjustable because even though this bump feels great while sitting upright in your chair, when you tilt back, your back has different needs, right? Think about it, who sleeps with a lumbar or with a pillow like in between their back? Nobody does, we sleep on flat surfaces. So the fact that this lumbar is not adjustable when you tilt back, well now you got a little bump in an unflattering part of your back. Now is it gonna, is it gonna hurt you? Is it gonna, no, it's just, it's just not as comfortable. So in terms of like napping, this can be a little bit aggressive. So it's much better suited for when you're like sitting up or in like a very small kind of tilt back inside your chair about this far. Now it does come with a lumbar pad, but this lumbar pad I find to be pretty useless because if I go ahead and stick it back here, remember what I said earlier about the chair not being 90 degrees and sitting at 95 degrees? Well, already when I sit properly inside the chair, I'm already kind of sitting like this. So my back is already kind of far away from the back when I'm doing like computer work. And this is how a lot of chairs are designed. Their backrest kind of tilt back a little bit. So you're able to use those shoulder muscles to keep your body up. But when I use this lumbar pad, watch what happens. Look how far away my entire back is. My back is, no part of my back is even touching the back of this chair. It's only touching the lumbar pad. So then if I were to want to relax in the chair, this is really uncomfortable. My hips are so far forward right now. This is really uncomfortable. So yeah, I find this, this thing is pretty redundant. Now, when it comes to this mesh back here, this is a really scratchy mesh. This is not like a soft mesh. And if you're concerned like, hey, uh, I like to game with my shirt off for long periods of time, well, this chair has something built into it that may solve that issue altogether so that you don't ever have to go shirtless inside your chair again. And that is the giant fan here in the middle. So how does the fan work? Well, on the backside here, you've got this compartment 
And when you go ahead and open it up, you get this USB type A cable, as well as a bunch of Velcro straps. And what you would do is you would take your power bank. The only power bank that I had on hand is double their recommended size, which is why it doesn't fit here, but it's got a good amount of space. And then you would go ahead and plug it in and that's gonna power on the fan. That way it keeps things cableless outside. You don't need to plug it into a wall or anything. So you go ahead and do that. And then it goes ahead and turns that fan on. On the right side, you're gonna get three buttons here. The biggest one, the topmost one is gonna be your power to turn it on and off. Your second one is gonna be your fan speed. You get two fan speeds at 400 RPM and 800 RPM. Let me go ahead and show the airflow what that looks like now. You may not see a huge difference in this test, but trust me, you can feel a significant difference between the two, not only just on your hand, but also when you're sitting inside of the chair. And the third button controls your RGB lights. You can click it and you've got nine different settings. And you can also click and hold and that's gonna turn your RGB lights off but keep in mind that's gonna reduce your overall gaming performance. Now this fan isn't meant to cool you down after running a marathon. Uh, instead, it's supposed to put a continuous, gentle, quiet breeze directly on your back because the floor fan might be too aggressive, too loud and get inside of your mic or both. This fan is super duper quiet at 400 RPM. I believe it's around 13 decibels and at 800 RPM, it's 24.8 decibels. And that's really quiet considering that a whisper is 25 decibels. The headrest for this chair is magnetic. It's soft and it's plush. I do wish the headrest was a little bit bigger and I wish that the magnetic area was just a little bit lower and I, like I wish it was expanded from like here and up because me being five foot six, if I go ahead and put the headrest on, you can see that it's not quite hitting where I want it to. It's hitting like the back of my head. I prefer my headrest to be here in the crook of my neck because it's so soft as well. Like I prefer, much prefer to be here, but you can see that if I do that, it's gonna fall down. It's not magnetic there. And that brings me to my final point, which is with sizing. This chair is definitely meant for bigger folks because again, me being five foot six, when I'm scooched far back inside the chair at the lowest setting, you can see that the back of my knees are digging into the front of the seat. Now it's okay because this thing is super soft and it's nice and flat, so it's not hurting or digging into me, but it's definitely making a lot of contact with the back of my calf. Ideally, you should have be able to fit two fingers between the back of your calf and the front edge of your seat. So this thing was definitely designed for people to be like five foot eight, maybe if you're five foot seven, but probably more like five foot eight and up. Now, in terms of weight limit, it's, I believe it's supposed to be 160 kilograms. Now I'm saying in kilograms because I don't know the conversion. It's like 350 some pounds. And if you're shorter, if you're smaller, you can still fit in this chair, uh, especially if you're an ergonomic rebel. It's also a nice choice because again, the seat cushion is phenomenal on this chair. And if you want a racing style gaming chair that's gonna offer you a lot of breathability, this is a really, really solid option. The seat feels good. The backrest is well designed. The fan is a bit gimmicky, but hey, it works and it offers a good amount of airflow flow, especially because like sometimes when I'm in a, a like a, a, a different mesh chair and I turn the floor fan on, I get cold, right? Like I, as much as I get hot, as soon as you do that, it, it's just so much airflow that it does start to feel really cold. So having a nice gentle breeze as opposed to this fan blasting at you is really nice. I think Cougar did an overall good job. That's going to do it for this one. Huge shout out to Cougar for sponsoring this video. Until next time, guys, stay safe. And as always, stay honest. <laughs>